What's going on guys, Coach Joe here at the Lion's Den. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about core exercises uh, for strength sport athletes. So core is kind of one of those big words that's thrown out all over the internet. And it's like a love-hate relationship with, with me and that word. However, it's easy for me to say core, and right away your brain starts thinking about the muscles that I'm talking. So basically, all the things around your trunk, okay? So that's posterior and anterior stuff, okay? Everything right around here, we're thinking abs, obliques, we're thinking the, the lower back, the erectors, all those things that are just stabilizing the trunk is gonna be quote unquote the core. Now my relationship with the core is kind of funny. So years ago, if you guys watch my training footage, okay, I was doing quote unquote a lot of strength and conditioning but athletic uh, movements as well as core movements. So I was doing uh, lots of things for the core and then as the, the videos and years progress, you see less and less of that. Now the reason behind that is because I thought I was doing way too much of that specific work uh, and I need to put more time into just lifting heavy. Now my train of thought with that was, you know, when I lift heavy, I am using those core muscles. So I was building a big, strong core. However, you know, time goes on, things change, my mind's all over the place and everything just comes full circle where I think I neglected that work a little bit too much. So now I'm starting to implement a little bit of that back in. Now I'm not gonna be doing all these really fancy, bizarre uh, ab exercises or anything like that. Okay, these are just gonna be some very basic exercises that I think myself can benefit from and anyone who's involved with uh, strength sport or just strength training uh, in general. Okay, so let's get right to it. All right guys, so exercise number one is going to be uh, leg raises, okay? Now I did a whole video on these with Dave Tate where he dives really in depth on why uh, he would program these for me specifically and uh, mostly recommends them for all strength sport athletes. So go check that video out. Uh, but I'm just gonna quickly demonstrate them. And this is something uh, that I neglected, used to do a ton of. And after I did a couple sets of just eight to 10 reps, I've been sore for like three days. Uh, so if you have these straps, you normally can always find them in a commercial gym. Uh, these are the Elite FTS ones that are super comfy and I like them a lot. Uh, but basically we wanna make sure that we get our arm all the way in. I like to typically just wrap my arm right around here and grab the carabiner. Okay, so once you feel safe and secure, okay, we just step off of a box or whatever's holding us up. Now the biggest thing here is making sure that if you actually wanna stretch uh, kind of your lower back and decompress the spine a little bit, you can just let your legs hang. So sometimes this just feels good to do, maybe before you're doing a lower body or a pulling day or anything with the posterior chain, et cetera. Uh, but from here, what we're gonna do for the first progression is just bringing our knees up to our chest and then back down. And you can see that I'm already starting to shake a little bit because I'm out of practice with these. So knees come up and we're just gonna bring them up and down. You can do three sets, eight to 10, whatever you're comfortable with. So that's gonna be progression one. Okay, progression two is when we come all the way down, we bring our knees up, and then we basically roll our hips up, and that's really gonna hit the abs, uh, the anterior and posterior chain, okay? So bring it in, okay, rolling up, coming back down, same thing. We could do three sets, eight to 10 reps. If you wanna get a little faster, just go right up, right down, right up, right down. Okay, last progression, or well, actually there's probably a couple here, is we can literally just reach our legs all the way up, all the way down, okay? So that's gonna be the hardest. That's one that uh, you know, I'll do a couple of reps of right now, slowly build to that. I'm sure you've seen other people do things like windshield wipers, Brian Alger does those a lot. So basically he brings his legs up, he'll go side to side. Okay, obviously that is very advanced. It's gonna take a lot of control, but I highly recommend them. You should throw them into your training. Just start with two to three sets, you know, eight to 10 reps, progressively scale it from there. All right, so Mr. Zeke here is gonna coach. Oh, no, he's not. He's not about that, that core life. He has, uh, he's got his core stabilized because he only has three legs. So Coach Shani here is demonstrating the next exercise, which is gonna be plank variations. So super simple, okay? One thing I'm looking for here, and, and this is an issue we see a lot with planks, is when people drop their hips. So show them dropping their hips, and they get pretty lazy, okay, when doing a plank. We wanna make sure that when we're doing planks, we're staying very active uh, with the exercise. So her hips are gonna be higher, okay? She's thinking about keeping everything tight, her squeezing uh, basically her elbows down, keeping her lats engaged, okay? Her legs are nice and strong. Sometimes people like to have their feet hip width. Some people will bring them together. That's up to you, personal preference. Figure out what's comfortable for you and what really helps you feel this movement as best as possible. Now, this is super easy, okay? She can probably sit here for 
several minutes. So to make it harder, typically what we'll do is put uh, some sort of weight or resistance uh, on her to make sure that she has to stay braced and she is resisting uh, some weight that's gonna keep her in that strong, stable position. But she can do a couple sets of 45 to 60 seconds. Um, and we just really like plank variations and we see that they just help build, you know, uh, strong muscles all around the anterior and posterior chain. Now to make it maybe a little bit ch more challenging, she can go down onto her forearms, just like so. Keeping the same uh, principles as we were just talking about, okay? She's not letting her hips sag, which is just gonna keep her lower back from fatiguing and keeping everything braced nice and strong. You can also do a side plank, so roll over to this arm. And she's gonna post up for a side plank. And then from here, what we can see is that her hips also are staying a little bit higher. Gotta get Zeke out of the way. Um, so, Tanya, why don't you show them where your hips sag on a side plank? So you can see as her hips drop, this is kind of what we're trying to fight the whole time. So she's gonna keep those hips high. You can stack your feet. To, for another progression, she can take her top leg and put it on the ground, just to kind of help give herself a little bit more stability. Um, so those are just a couple different variations. And that's kind of where I would keep it, at least for the planks. So you can do a regular plank, you can go down through the time. You can go on your forearms um, and just kind of see how they work for you. Like I said, probably do two to three sets, anywhere from 45 seconds to a minute. And if you're strong enough to add some extra resistance, uh, do that. Next exercise uh, for working those muscles is going to be a hollow hold, all right? Uh, so basically when we're doing this hollow hold, okay, we're gonna kick our legs out just like we're doing a six inch drill, which I'm sure you guys have heard about. But the difference here is that we don't want any space underneath our lower back. So basically I wanna make sure that I'm pushing my belly button through my body and down into the floor, which is gonna keep my lower back pressed into the ground. All right, and really making sure that I'm activating the proper muscles. From there, we're gonna put our hands behind our head just like so, and we're gonna hold this, okay? 30 seconds is gonna be pretty brutal if you're doing it correctly, because it's really easy to cheat, let the legs drop, and create that space under our lower back, which is not what we want, okay? So belly button press through to the floor, hands behind the head, and we'll hold this. Now, if you wanna scale it up and make it a little bit harder, we can start to do what's called a hollow rock, okay? So this is where, I'm activating all those muscles the same exact way, but now I'm adding a little bit of movement to it, which is just gonna make it harder and force me to stabilize a lot more. So two variations for you guys to try and throw them into your training. Brutal, okay, absolutely brutal. So if you can't do those, uh, start with the regression and then you can progress over time as you get stronger. All right guys, so another exercise uh, that you may not think right, is involved with the core, because typically when we think core, maybe we're always thinking anteriorly, but we're also thinking posteriorly, and that is going to be just a back extension, okay? So it's really important to have uh, strong back muscles when we are doing our big compound lifts. Uh, so what Coach Tiny is gonna do is just do a typical back extension where she's hanging all the way down to the bottom, and she just wants to come up, basically to be parallel with the floor, okay? So that's perfect, and she's gonna come down. So you can come back up. So she'll just do a couple reps here. Maybe go a little bit higher. So I come up, touch my hand, good, and then back down, perfect. Now what we see often is people tend to overextend this movement. So maybe come as high as you can, Tanya, right? And that's not what we want, okay? So if we're just working on a back extension here, I just want her to come just so she's parallel with the floor and then back down. So this is a great exercise for warming up as well as strengthening these muscles. There's tons of different progressions and regressions that you can do. I'm sure they're all over the internet, uh, but for here, just kind of want to give you some of the basics. So she could maybe do two, three sets, anywhere from eight to 12 reps, kind of either just priming your body or using this as a movement to strengthen those muscles, uh, which will then help long-term uh, with just her lifts and her, just how she feels uh, in general. Now, another common variation is gonna be the glute ham raise. And we actually had done these with the, uh, John Meadows. So I'm gonna link that video right here where you can watch uh, myself, my training partners, uh, which is just a wide variety of athletes getting taught how to properly do uh, glute ham raises the correct way with uh, Coach Meadows. And then he gave us some progressions and regressions as well. So go watch that video. But that's something else that I would include as a variation along with the back extensions that you guys had just seen here. So next exercise that we do a lot as strength sport athletes, uh, it's gonna be carries. Now more specifically, if you're trying to just work a little bit more of that anterior posterior chain, every time I've been saying anterior posterior chain, every time I've been saying anterior posterior chain. Was that a B? Is there a B? Or what is it? No, it was like a huge, I just didn't want to sting you. I thought it was a loss. All right. 
Whew, almost died. I'm allergic to bees. No one knows that though. Could have been the end of the, the whole thing here. Uh -huh. So, uh, what I was saying guys is we do a lot of carries here, uh, which are great just for overall strength, especially if you're in the sport of straw man, you're gonna be doing a lot of carries. Um, but if you wanna utilize the core a little bit more, ooh, look at that, sick rhymes, Matt, sick rhymes. Uh, you guys can do single arm carries, okay? So the single arm is just gonna throw off your balance a little bit, which is just gonna cause you to have to stabilize more. So anytime we have to stabilize, we're gonna be using all of those muscles uh, to help keep you know, our upright position or whatever position we're trying to maintain when we are doing a lift or the exercise. So uh, for me, kettlebells are super easy. If you have farmer handles, you can use those as well. Uh, but basically, okay, we're just gonna pick up the implement all right, and we're just gonna walk for distance. Now it has to be heavy enough that you feel like it's trying to pull you in some sort of direction that's causing you to resist, okay? So if it's in my right arm, I can feel it on my left side. So it's typically gonna work opposites. And then from there, while maintaining that upright torso, okay, I'm just walking. And you can do this for 100 feet, 50 feet, all depends on how heavy the implement is. And then from there, we can just switch, okay, turn, go back, so now I'm working the opposite side. And we really wanna make sure that it's heavy enough to be pulling us in a certain direction. If it's too light, you're just wasting your time, basically. But that's just something that we like to throw in. We'll do it for straw man training. Our athletes will do it. And like I said, this could be used as uh, exercise for strengthening those muscles or uh, as a warm up as well. Maybe you are doing some carries, you just wanna warm up that way. That's fine too. You know, this is just information for you guys to do with it what you want to. All right guys, quick video, so there you have it. Just some exercise that I'm gonna start implementing back into my training. I did this stuff a lot in the past. If you watch my older videos, you'll notice that I was incorporating this more into my training, uh, but I got a little bit further away from it, so now I think it's just gonna benefit me where I'm at in my training right now to throw those in uh, just here and there. Okay, I'm not gonna overdo it, but either just to warm up and also strengthen those muscles a little bit more, uh, I think it's gonna benefit me. So you guys do with it what you will. All right, obviously we kept saying posterior, anterior chain, we said core, right? These are just catchy words that are used all the time. But basically we mean all the muscles, okay, that are just helping stabilize our trunk when we're doing exercises, all right? So don't neglect one or the other. And if you find that one is weaker, okay, that's where you wanna emphasize and put some time into. But like I said, a couple sets here and there for a few reps, gauge you on how it works best for you. Uh, but that's all we have for today. If there's other exercises you guys really like, throw them down below in the comments sections. I'll be sure to respond or check them out, maybe do another video in the future uh, with either some more progressions uh, for certain exercises that I find can benefit you guys. Uh, but make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel, okay? Give this video a thumbs up. And then if you guys also want, we have our Facebook group, The Iron Lions, which you guys can just type in the Facebook search bar. You guys uh, will be accepted in there. It's just a great community uh, for where you can put your training footage. We have articles, we do form checks, and just a lot of like-minded individuals in strength sports and just trying to better themselves. So check that out. We also have tons of programs available on zapstrength.net, okay? so plethora of programs that I'm sure are gonna benefit you. And we also have my uh, man, Matt, who's behind the camera. So he has a YouTube channel, uh, which is just type in Matt Malloy on YouTube. Okay, he is training for an Ironman that's coming up pretty soon. So he's been documenting that whole journey where he's doing strength training, and he's also training for an Ironman, which is no easy task. Uh, but he basically started from scratch and is progressively doing that, giving you guys the path if you wanna combine endurance ath uh, athletics with strength sport athletics. So super cool. Uh, but that's all we have, guys. So make sure you guys stay a lean, mean, track machine. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.